your one and only out and about lady here in New Zealand anytime, any day, Juliet Chinello. So you are welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it is your first time stopping by, please endeavor to subscribe, give me a thumb up, drop your beautiful comment. All this uplifts my spirit to even share more so that a lot of you would have that first hand information on what living, working, and studying here in New Zealand is all about. So, in today's video, I am going to be sharing how you can pack your food stores from overseas prior to your migration to New Zealand and um, what you shouldn't bother including like the contrabands and also food stuffs that you can get alternative or near alternative here in New Zealand. So guys, let's get started. I would start with uh, food stuffs that you can actually find near alternative or alternatives here in New Zealand. So the very first one I will be talking about today is your beans, your black eye beans. So I will just bring it closer so you can see this. Um, the seeds look a bit smaller, but trust me, this is exactly the same with your black eye uh, um, peas back home. If you use it for your moi moi and akara, it comes out the same. And there's a popular Indian supermarket by name, um, Yogiji. Um, I am not really marketing them because they are not paying for this video. So you can get this base there. Um, and another stuff that you can find alternative here in New Zealand is for your melon seeds. So in the same Yogiji, you can get one. I don't actually have one here. The seeds are, are smaller than our typical um, melon seed but it tastes exactly the same with a goose if you buy it from Yogiji. And there's another one I get in New Zealand um, chain supermarkets. You need to watch the video where I shared about um, supermarkets here in New Zealand. So this is um, green melon seed. To me, this is the egusi I know. So what I do is I soak it in um, room temperature water, take out the green coating the much i can actually the green coating will not affect the taste of your egusi but just do what works for you i take it out a little bit then wash it blend it then use it and make my egusi soup like normally how i would so another um nigerian food stuff or african food stuff that you can find here in new zealand is okra so okra during summer that is um you guys know is a seasonal vegetable you can find fresh one but during winter you can buy in any indian shop close to you the frozen one or you can actually um uh, put some fresh ones in the freezer during the season depending on what works for you so another um, vegetable that you can't find here is corn yes during summer you can find corn here in new zealand but they are sweet corn not like our own plant corn so <laughs> you might need to um juggle around with your taste board especially the connoisseurs among us that want um food to always taste exactly how they are used to it so what else do i need to talk about so here in new zealand new zealand this is what yam means and you guys know back home this is yam so here in new zealand you can actually find yam but they are mostly frozen yams from the indian um supermarket so just for you to be aware of that and another thing i would like to talk about is your prunes and your crayfish so what i do here is to buy frozen prunes and probably put it in the oven to have it dry and if i want to have that taste of crayfish in my food i blend it then that's it yeah that's um that's how i walk around it to reduce cost so another thing that we'll be talking about today is this this is um here is called taro t-a-r 
all so i think it's a popular food in the in the pacific island here like the salmons papua new guinea yeah but this is exactly exactly tastes like coco yam yeah so you can use this to make your coco yam soup and anything that you would use coco yam to make in africa it's quite expensive though so that's it for the food stuffs that you can get here locally in New Zealand and also if you're a fan of plantain if you live in the big cities during summer you can find um, plantain I know I have seen it the heaps of time in Westfield Mall supermarket um, I can save supermarket and other Indian shops in Christchurch so these are um, Nigerian food or African food that I know that you can find their near alternative here in New Zealand And when it comes to your green vegetable for making your soup You have um, a wide range of options that you do not need to actually Bother yourself around if you want to eat fresh vegetables. They have got Spinach and that is close to your pumpkin leaf and they have got this one. I quite like it This is silver beet you can use this to make your uh, melon uh, soup and it will turn out great as if you use your um, a pumpkin leaf and they have also got um, kai leaf uh, that is in between um, silver beet and spinach leaf is a little bit um, not as soft as this other two but if you insist that you want to do bitter leaf and all that vegetable, you can dry them out and find your botanical name and come with that. And also other soup thickeners like um, this. Uh, my kids quite like it. This is awono or you can call it a bush mango seed. Um, unlike five, Three years ago, we do not have uh, too many African vendors selling African food here in New Zealand, but now there are quite a few, so you can buy them online and also you can order from other countries like US, UK, whatever uh, works for you. Actually, this one, I got it from the US. So that is all. Um, one more thing, and also we have... Um, sweet potato yes we have it here in new zealand and we have a wide range of all the white potatoes irish in fact here is a home of um potato varieties you will get um different types but this is actually the only one i have at home now so that's why i'm showing you the irish potatoes what we would you and i usually call irish potatoes if I am to make a video of it here in New Zealand, I think there should be more than 12 varieties of those. So these are foodstuffs that I could wrap my head around that we've got, um, we've got near alternative here in New Zealand. Let's go to the second phase of this video, which is how to pack your foodstuffs if you've got that visa to head to New Zealand. So the number one thing I will tell you is that you have to visit New Zealand custom because it's constantly under review. What worked last six months might not be what is obtainable today. So I would be attaching that link in the comment section so that you have a flip around it to know what um, vegetable seeds that are not allowed in New Zealand currently and you guys know new zealand don't play with their nature weather ecosystem and anything that would disrupt their natural habitat so they are very strict if they state it in their custom website that this is not allowed trust me it is not allowed so flip through it and know um, what is not allowed and all of that but the form of packaging your food stuff from my experience i would tell you that the way you present whatever you are um, traveling with um, coming to new zealand or any other country is very important so you have to present it yes this is a food that i'm actually i'm actually going to eat so 
present it um, to be neat and well packaged and if possible try and buy from vendors that have already got this uh, food item packaged and with NAVDAC numbers and something like that that will help in the presentation and that this um, food product has been assessed by our own um, agency that regulates food and medication so I would urge that you go for the top-notch packaging and if you are doing it yourself try to go to the market and select the good breeds like good try to go to the market to select the good breeds like uh, clean seeds if you are going for your urban clean egusi seeds and things like that and if you want to bring some dry fish there is so much around that you have to look on that custom website that I said I'll be dropping a link to know the species of fishes that are not allowed to come into New Zealand yeah so and the ones that are allowed to come you try and pick from those and try as much as you can to dry it and preserve it properly because if they see any ant or anything coming out of that fish trust me you're not having it yeah and so that's it i would say do not grant anything from my experience because if you grant your food stuff like your egusi said it will look like the powder form will look like and you know there's a lot of issues around um traveling with powders as um the actual content of the powder cannot be um assessed by ordinary uh, visual inspection and i don't think that you want to go through that uh, shenanigans of uh, being suspected that what you are carrying is not um an edible powder that is something else so try and dry up your seeds and have them not crushed or blended that would help them go through and if you're packaging like i said earlier on package write the name write the botanical name in case if um they are they are struggling with knowing what it is they can always use the botanical name to match if this product is allowed allowed into new zealand or not on this video up uh, i would also like to mention to you i can remember the last time i um physically brought uh foodstuffs to new zealand if you get to nigerian airport there is usually this stuff that they will ask you to put through a form if you are living with any foodstuffs to make sure that agriculture or something of Nigeria is aware of it or they have inspected that food. Please, if they approach you for this, I know the motive around it is all about money. Endeavor to pay and get that certification, it will help you. And why on your arrival here in New Zealand, get that certification, present to them that will make them know that your agency from where you are coming from they've assessed this food so it's okay and also if they give you that form to declare if you are entering New Zealand with any food please do not hide your food items accept or not to your food items tick yes be very truthful tick all the things in that list that you are with so that will help um that will help them assess um that will that will help them in assessment um and also ruling out that you have got ulterior motives and things like that because if you feel no 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 that you don't have these items and and the dog sniff and say yes there's fish here and you said oh i don't know that i've got fish trust me all those things stay they wouldn't help your food pass through and enter New Zealand. Be truthful so that they will know how to deal with it straight off. Uh, yes, she says she's got fish. Um, yeah, our dog sniffing and saying there's something here. Yeah, it could be that fish. So they will not bring out the fish. They will say, oh, is this type of fish, the breed, according to our list, is allowed here in New Zealand. So they will not check, oh, uh, it has not got incense or it has got incense and things like that and if paraventure the food you've got has has got an incense and is allowed here in new zealand and you have stated to them that it is for your private consumption 
that you are not selling it to the public and things like that they will give you two options they will give you three options actually either to have the food destroyed which will be at their own cost or they will have the food sent back to your home country which i think will be at your own cost and the third cost is for you to um pay for the food to be treated uh, yeah they will do freeze drying and any other form of suitable treatment to kill off the scents and ants and any seed that is allowed here in new zealand that you came with so it, once you pay for the freeze drying they will not release it to you since it is for your private consumption so guys this is what this blog today is all about let me know what you all think in the comment section if you find us useful or if there is any other food that you are looking at that i didn't mention here like your favorite food you really want to know if you've got near alternative or alternative here in new zealand use the comment section and this girl here will hop onto it and i would answer you to the best of my knowledge until i see you guys next time stay blessed and bye for now